These are some of the most brutal and painful deaths in human history. The first is this wacky execution method from ancient Rome. If you committed a particularly heinous crime, they would take two trees and bend them down to your level. Then they'd tie those trees to your feet. Take a guess what they did next. That's right. They would wait for you to apologize before releasing you. I'm joking, they would just let go and watch as you got brutally ripped in half. Beautiful stuff, those guys really were the best at what they did. Yeah, that was pretty brutal, but you know what? At least it was quick. That's more than I can say for this next style of execution, known as Ling Chi, or Death by a Thousand Cuts. Just based on the name, I would bet you can picture what this torture was like. Ling Chi originated in Imperial China, and was the chosen method of execution for people who committed treason. The victim would be tied up in some way, whether to a tree or a block of wood. And then it starts, with a single, tiny cut, and then another, and another. This would go on and on. I read that the longest time anyone ever underwent this torture was three days. Guess how many cuts they received in those three days? Yeah, go ahead, pick a number. Okay, I'll give you a hint. It's above seven. You guessed? Well, if you said 1,000 cuts in three days, then you'd be wrong because the answer is 3,300. 3,300 cuts in three days. That's 47 cuts an hour. That's three quarters of a cut per minute. So basically imagine getting a paper cut every 60 seconds for three days until you die. My analysis as the completely untrained and unprofessional doctor is that that would hurt. But luckily, there's good news. Don't worry, you can trust me. Because it's definitely 100% good news and not horrifying in any way. So your family can actually pay money to your torturer to have you stabbed through the heart. In a loving way. Yippee, I told you it's good news. Alright, let me introduce you to our next victim. A kind little fellow known as Haj Muhammad Musfui. I definitely pronounced his name wrong, but you know what? That's okay. Because the man's a serial killer. That's right. Mr. Mapui over here killed, at minimum, 36 different women. Well, damn, I'm glad they caught him. So, since he did so much damage, it's straight to the executioner, right? We gotta get him off the streets as quickly as possible. Well, that's what you would think, and that was actually the original plan. He was supposed to be crucified on May 2nd, 1906, and that'd be the end of that. But the people, they had a different plan in mind. They figured that Mr. Munchie deserved more than a relatively medium-length agonizing death. And the justice system agreed. So every day for the next four weeks, he would be brought to the market square and lashed ten times with a rod made from thorny acacia. Wow, that is brutal indeed. But wait, you thought it was done there? Nah, the people yearn for more agony. So it was decided that Mr. Matushi would be walled alive inside the marketplace. Yeah, they had some dudes hollow out this giant wall about six feet high and two feet wide. Then they dragged him to his cell. Or rather, his tomb. Dun dun dun. Also, weird detail, but according to official records, as the dude was being dragged across the marketplace, the townspeople threw organ meat at him. Like, meat made of animal organs. Lovely stuff. For the next two days, every time people heard his scream from inside the bazaar, they would cheer. Until day three when the scream stopped. So now you can tell your friends all about the time a Moroccan shoemaker got walled alive for the murder of 36 women. Cool. That was pretty damn freaky. But I would argue that it's definitely not as freaky as it gets, because it's just gonna get worse and worse. Case in point, the next execution coming up, which I have labeled in my notes as whatever you call this, because, well, you're just gonna have to watch and see. Meet Robert Francois Damien. He was born on January 5th, 1757. And who am I kidding? You don't care about that. Here's the interesting bit. On March 28th, 1757, he tried to kill the current king of France, Louis XV. He sprinted. Sprunt? Sprant. He sprant through the king's bodyguards, lunged, and stabbed the king of France with a penknife. Unfortunately for Francois, the king was doing the most French king thing possible and wearing giant puffy clothes, which somehow saved his life because the penknife only stabbed a single centimeter into the man's skin. Nevertheless, Louis was fully convinced he was going to die, and actually called for a confessor to apologize to his wife about all his different affairs. Love that. 
Well, they obviously apprehended the man, and here's where the fun begins. The first thing they did was get him a new pair of boots. Not this kind of boot. I mean the boot that can crush the bones in your legs. Then he was tortured with red hot pincers. Then hot wax was poured into the wounds. They're not done there though, not even close. After messing around a bit, the executioner tied his arms and legs to four separate horses. Maybe you can see where we're going with this. He then sent the horses off in different directions, ripping tendons and dislocating his limbs. But uh-oh, an issue. Though he was already mangled, the horses weren't able to rip him apart. So the executioner made large cuts on each of his joints, to ease the process if you will. That time, it worked perfectly. Wow, cool. So that was mildly horrifying. Now let's take a trip to France to see what the punishment was for being a dark wizard who also happened to be a serial killer. Yep, that's right. Meet Peter Nears, half serial killer, half black magician in league with the devil. There were a few interesting stories about the man, like the theory, dare I say the fact, that he had the power to turn invisible. Also, he ate baby hearts. What? Now, let's get to his torture. Basically, Peter went to a bathhouse. He didn't know, but inside the bathhouse, he got recognized by some random dude. It was said, by Wikipedia, that a mumbling and whispering spread among the bathhouse guests, until two dudes eventually slipped out the bathhouse door and went to the place where he was staying. The innkeeper there let them look through the man's bags, and what they found inside was interesting to say the least. Quiz time! Which one of these four items were found inside his bag? 1. Some food. 2. A book. 3. Human hearts and hands. 4-4. Four, four. A Dell laptop. Well, if you said either one or three, then you're correct, because the bag was full of human hearts and hands. Baby hearts and hands. I just felt the need to clarify that. So yeah, they came back and stormed the bathhouse, taken PD prisoner. Clearly, he wasn't properly fueled on baby hearts and hands, so he was apprehended almost immediately. From there, the fun began. So you're clearly wondering, how do you torture a dark wizard? Well, let's learn from these guys, because step one is apparently to take giant chunks out of them and to fill those holes with wax. Hot wax. Step two is to drench his feet with hot oil and to hold him above a fire. Ideally, this roasts him alive, but doesn't kill him. Why don't we want to kill him? Because he must live to experience the next step. Enter the breaking wheel. If you haven't heard of this thing before, get ready for some crazy stuff. What they did is carefully place the wheel on your chest, so as not to injure you. Then, they would slowly roll it back and forth. Nah, I'm kidding, they smashed it onto him over and over. 42 times, actually. Why stop at 42? Why not 43? 44 even? Because now, it was time. Time for the execution. At this point, there was no messing around. They just straight up cut him into quarters. Jesus, that was a bit of a nightmare to read about. I don't think it gets worse than that. Well, actually, let me introduce you to Georgi Doza, who suffered a fate that could be described as pretty bad. So, this was a dude who tried to lead a rebellion of some sort that ultimately failed. But don't worry, it wasn't all for nothing. At least he got executed in a horrifying and gruesome way for us to enjoy. Since he was the leader of this rebellion, his executioners saw fit for him to wear an iron crown and sit on an iron throne. Once he was seated, they slowly heated the throne. And I mean slowly. It's like when you turn on the car seat heater and it just keeps getting hotter. Except this time, it didn't stop. They did the same for his crown and for a heated scepter they shoved into his hand. He sat there and slowly roasted on the holy oven. Then they let him cook for an hour. But if that was the end of it, he wouldn't have made it into this video. Next, the executioners brought in nine starved rebels that had been in Doza's army. Under threat of execution, those nine rebels were forced to rip chunks out of Doza with their teeth. This is probably the most poetic yet horrifying death I've seen so far. Damn, that sucks, bro. Anyway, you know what time it is. That's right. Time to get even more horrifying. Welcome to the story of Baltazar Gerard. This dude was actually a trained assassin who committed the greatest sin known to man. That's right. He messed with the rich people. Which rich people did he mess with in particular? Prince William the Silent. And by mess with, I mean he shot him in the chest with two flintlock pistols. 
This may come as a shock, but William the Silent did indeed not survive the attack. I won't go too in-depth into the situation, but I just want you to know that this assassination could have been a video all on its own. The man shot a dude, ran away from his dozens of bodyguards, and almost got away with it. He was running to a moat that he was about to jump into, and was planning on floating away on a pig's bladder. But then, he slipped, on a pile of garbage, and he got caught. And let me tell you that getting caught was not the optimal thing to do in this situation. The prince's guard was exceptionally creative with their punishments. Here's the list. First, he was hung from a pole and whipped. Ouch, right? Oh boy, does it get worse. Next, they smeared him with honey and a goat was sent to lick him. This doesn't sound very horrifying unless you're familiar with it. Goats can do a hell of a lot of damage to a person. I'm talking ripping their flesh off to the bone. Luckily for Balthazar, the goat for some reason decided not to lick him that particular day. At that point, the torturers got kind of tired, so they let Balthazar go to sleep. But first, they of course hogtied him to make it as painful as possible, because they're quirky like that. The next day when he awoke, things amped right back up. First, they tied two 300 pound weights to each of his big toes, which I don't even understand how that works. Like, surely your big toes would just pop right off, unless this dude had some absolutely jacked toes. But if he didn't, geez, that would hurt. Well, at this point, the man's life is coming to a close, but of course, the torturers felt the need to squeeze as much agony out of the dude as possible. So, for the last few steps, he was fitted with tiny crushing boots made of dog skin. Then, he was put over a fire. The boots then contracted and essentially crushed all of the bones in his feet, so he ended up with two stumps. He didn't last much longer after that. After four days of torture, he was decapitated. Jesus! Now click this video about the most dangerous jobs in human history, and if you made it to the end, subscribe.